in the last lecture we learned about behavior subject which is a kind of subject in this lecture we are going to learn about another type of subject which is replay subject so replay subject replay old values to new subscribers when they first subscribe the replay subject will store every value it emits in a buffer and it will emit them to the new subscribers in the order it received them now you can configure the buffer using the arguments like buffer size and window time and we will talk about these arguments later let's first see what is a replay subject and how it is different from behavior subject with an example so in the last lecture we created this behavior subject let me go ahead and let me comment it for now and i will uncomment this subject so here we are creating a subject and for that subject we have three subscribers okay now what i will do is before we have any subscribers here before that using this subject i am going to emit some value and to emit a value we can use next method on that subject so from here let's say i want to emit 100 in the same way let me also go ahead and let me copy and paste this line two more times and then the next time we are emitting 200 and third time we are emitting 300 okay so we have created a subject and this subject has already emitted these three values after that we have a new subscriber now the subject works in the way that after it has emitted some value and after that we have a subscriber that subscriber will not receive the previously emitted values so none of these subscribers are going to receive this value 100 200 and 300 because these subscribers has subscribed to this subject after this subject has emitted all these three values so if i go to the web page there you will not see 100 200 and 300 logged you will see 2020 logged two times for subscriber one and subscriber two because we have emitted this value 2020 after subscriber one and subscriber two has subscribed and for this subscriber three you will not see that value 2020 you will see 2023 for subscriber 3 but you will not see 2020 for this subscriber 3 that's because the subscriber 3 has subscribed after this value 2020 has emitted so whenever we have a new subscriber that new subscriber will not have the previous data which the subject has emitted but if you want to store the previous data for the new subscribers in that case instead of using a subject you can use replay subject so let me copy this line and let's comment it and now we are going to make use of replay subject so here instead of creating a subject i am going to create a replay subject and again in order to use this replay subject we need to import it from rxjs library and when we use replay subject if it has emitted any value it will keep that value in buffer okay and whenever we will have a new subscriber that subscriber will receive the old emitted values from the buffer so the subscriber one it is going to receive this 100 200 and 300 same is the case with subscriber 2 and after that we are also emitting this value 2020 so the subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 it will also receive this value 2020 and the subscriber 3 here also it will receive all the old values so it is going to receive 100 200 300 and it is also going to receive 2020 and 2023 okay so when we use replay subject all the subscribers also receive the old emitted values let's see that in action so if i save the changes now and if you go to the web page you will see that subscriber 1 is now receiving 100 200 and 300 subscriber 2 is also receiving 100 200 and 300 now these three values were emitted before these subscribers subscribe to this replay subject but since replay subject keeps these values in buffer whenever there will be a new subscriber those new subscriber will receive the old emitted values after that we are again emitting this value 2020 so this value 2020 will also get received by subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 and you see for the subscriber 3 we have received 100 200 and 300 and after that this 2020 was also emitted earlier before subscriber 3 subscribed to the replay subject 
right but since it is an old value which was stored in the buffer this subscriber 3 has also received this value and after we have subscribed we are also emitting this value 2023 so subscriber 3 will also receive this value 2023 and you can see that here so subscriber 1 subscriber 2 and subscriber 3 all of them have received this value 2023 so this is what we use a replace subject for we use replace subject when we want to pass the previously emitted data to all the new subscribers and this previously emitted data it will be stored in a buffer and whenever there will be a new subscriber that new subscriber will immediately receive the previously emitted data from the buffer now this replace subject it also takes an argument so it basically takes two argument as we saw in this slide the first argument is the buffer size it basically tells how many number of previous data we want to keep in buffer and which should be passed to the new subscribers by default it is infinity that means by default the replace subject will keep all the previously emitted data in the buffer but we can also configure it so here since we have not specified any buffer size here in that case it is going to keep all the previously emitted data in the buffer but let's say if i say two here in that case it will only keep the last two emitted data in the buffer it will not keep all the previously emitted data in the buffer it will only keep the last two emitted data in the buffer so in that case for the subscriber one and subscriber two we will receive 200 and 300 from the previous data we will not receive 100 because here we have set the buffer size to 2 so in the buffer the last two previously emitted data will be 200 and 300 and that will be passed to subscriber 1 and subscriber 2 after that we are emitting this new value 2020 from this replace subject so now the last two emitted data will be 300 and 2020 so for this third subscriber we are going to receive this value 300 and 2020 from the buffer let's see that in action so if i save the changes and if we go back to the web page you see for the subscriber one from the buffer we are only receiving 200 and 300 for the subscriber two also we are receiving 200 and 300 then we are emitting this value 2020 so subscriber one will receive 2020 and subscriber two will receive 2020 after that we created a new subscriber subscriber three so the subscriber three is going to receive the last two emitted value from the buffer and the last two emitted value will be 300 and 2020 so that's what this subscriber 3 is receiving it is receiving 300 and 2020 after that we are emitting a new value 2023 so all the subscribers are going to receive that value 2023 so using the first argument of this replace subject we can set the buffer size that means we can tell how many previously emitted data we want to store in the buffer then it also takes a second argument so here we can specify a time interval you can see here we can specify a time and that time will basically tell for how long we want to store the previously emitted data in the buffer for example if i specify thousand that means we want to keep the data for one second in the buffer after that that data will be removed from the buffer so after one second if there will be any new subscriber those subscribers will not receive the previously emitted data because the previously emitted data is already removed from the buffer after one second so this is the use of second argument okay so if you have a requirement and in that requirement you don't want to specify any initial value for the subject if you want to specify an initial value for the subject then you will have to use behavior subject but if you don't need any initial value but you want to emit old values to all new subscribers you can use this replace subject so i hope now you know what is a replace subject and when do we use a replace subject and how it is different from behavior subject we also learned that replace subject can take two arguments the first argument will be the buffer size and the second argument will be the window time the amount of time we want to keep the values in the buffer and by default its value is also infinity so if you don't specify any time interval the previously emitted values will not be removed from the buffer at all it will always remain in the buffer this is all from this lecture if you have any questions related to replace subject then feel free to ask it
Thank you for listening and have a great day.